Hey everybody and happy Friday. This is JJ once again, back again for another ASUS PC DIY hardware live stream. So for those of you guys checking us out on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, thanks so much for joining us. Hopefully your weekend uh, is getting ready to start off on a positive decker footing and your week is uh, ending up on the same exact footing. So uh, we've got actually a few things to touch on. I think about three new products we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be jumping into um, a brand new uh, mouse pad. We've got a new headset, actually a follow-up to this guy right here with the uh, ROG Delta Origin, that Tough Gaming uh, P1 uh, mouse pad. And then we've also got an update for our AM4 series of motherboards with the Tough Gaming Micro ATX based motherboard for those uh, that are interested maybe in a B550 based solution. So uh, we've got that. We've got some awesome builds in terms of the PC DIY Builder Spotlight that we're going to be diving into. And of course, we're going to be answering your guys' questions and giving you guys some updates in terms of some things that we've got going on relative to UEFI announcements and some other ASUS based items. Uh, let's see who we've got here joining us on the stream. Hey, Michael. Thanks so much for joining us on the stream. Happy to have you here, man. Uh, Bianca, thanks so much also for joining us here on the stream. Uh, Geekbench guy, always happy to have you here. So thanks so much for joining us as well. Uh, Jason, we've also got uh, Catching Us Live. Thanks so much for joining us here on the stream. And Erica's also got us going on. So uh, thanks so much for joining us on the stream as well, Erica. And also catching it again uh let me go ahead and make sure to uh, remove my little background audio right there although i'm always a little bit fan of some lo-fi beats so uh, let's go ahead and see what we've got going on there all right oh hey hey sumin uh, also thanks for joining us here on the stream as well so uh hey rickstar uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us all the way from Australia, man. Uh, the more the merrier. So uh, let's go ahead and get ready to jump into a few things. And first and foremost, give you guys the updates when it comes to our UEFI BIOS announcements. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So give me one second to go ahead and bring this up for you guys. And uh, we will jump into this and hopefully be able to give you guys uh, some updates. And I think for a lot of you that are probably going to find this generally most relevant are going to be those that are going to be on the AM4 platform and uh, maybe have some interest in some of the newer CPUs that are going to be coming out from AMD in the not too distant future. So let's go ahead and jump into this a little bit here. <clears throat> So uh, if you haven't heard, uh, AMD, of course, made some recent announcements helping to communicate that, that they were going to be uh, essentially offering motherboard partners uh, a GISA support to be able to implement uh, essentially newer Ryzen series processors for AM3 300 series motherboards. So we actually are going to be issuing out those UEFI releases. Um, and there's also been, of course, a wide scale uh, set of CPUs that are going to be coming out that are going to need a new UEFI release. So Let's go through the motions and talk about actually what you're going to want to keep in mind if you're maybe interested in upgrading to one of these new AMD based CPUs. So uh, let me go ahead and bring up actually our ASUS PC DIY Facebook group page. Uh, we've got actually a featured, a featured announcement there that actually covers all the boards that we have relative to um, not only the updates in terms of all the boards that I actually have received uh, the UEFI updates, but it also has actually like a cool featured post, um, which will give you kind of insights into understanding um, which motherboards not only have the applicable updates, which CPUs are going to be covered and kind of a lot of that information. So uh, let me go ahead and just load this up here. Okay, uh, so here you can see we've gone ahead and uh, checked out this post that we have. And you'll see right here, uh, we went ahead and issued an announcement post. And we've got a cool little breakdown of information right here, which actually gives you a table to let you know pretty much all the boards that have already received the UEFI update, which the base AGISA requirement is going to be AGISA 1.2.0.6.b. And uh, we already essentially have a whole list right here of all the motherboards that have 
that corresponding update that's been issued from the 500 series, and then there's the 400 series. Uh, for those of you that might be on the 300 series, we'll have an update coming in by around the end of this month, maybe possibly the beginning of next month, um, but those would be, say, uh, boards that are going to be on the X370. Now, who's this going to apply to? It's going to generally be for users that are going to be interested in checking out the newer range of CPUs uh, from AMD. So an example would be like the 5800X3D, um, but there's also quite a number of new CPUs that are being uh, issued by AMD um, in this lineup. So go ahead and go back here to that post. And so you can see right here, we've got the 5700X, the 5600, 5500, 4600G, 4500, 4500, and 4100, okay? So uh, it's going to be a pretty big, uh, essentially, range of updates. You, of course, have a lot of other UEFIs uh, that have already been issued. Um, and if you already have your system kind of running stable and reliable, you don't generally have to be concerned. There's no reason for you all of a sudden to just update the UEFI arbitrarily. Um, the main reason being, as always, we do uh, recommend kind of being cautious when you go about updating your UEFI firmware because uh, if your system is already stable, reliable, it's got a tuned in overclocked, whether that's going to be through PBO, whether it's going to be through DOCP uh, supporting an XMP profile, specialized RAID configurations. When you update the UEFI, especially when it contains a GISA, there can be changes in subtle auto rules and other values that can kind of affect uh, that experience. And you might have to go back and kind of retune the system. So um, I generally always advocate if your system's working without an issue, don't worry about it. Keep on the build that you're running. But if you're going to be building a new system or you're maybe interested in stepping up to one of these new CPUs, then we've got you covered with those new UEFI releases. So um, let me go ahead and just see if we've got any questions right here. Hey, Sneff, happy to have you here, man. Fantastic, as always. Uh, yep. That is correct, that the 5800X3D. Uh, so that is going to be a very, very high-performing CPU from AMD, really kind of their flagship gaming CPU that they're going to be offering for the AM4 platform. It offers some very innovative-based architecture and design. So uh, it's exciting, of course, to be able to have support for this across a wide series of boards. So uh, we've got you covered. Yeah, so uh, Michael, uh, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. You know, I think AMD is, you know, uh, really committed to, of course, allowing for a wide scale of performance tuning. And definitely, you know, from ASUS's perspective, we're always interested in trying to help to allow users uh, an extensive level of kind of tweaking and tuning. But the reality is, is, you know, it's already an outstanding level of performance that you're getting out of the box with that part. And their main goal was to be able to offer this innovative new type of process technology and architecture and uh, implementation altogether within the CPU and then be able to provide it to users. So, um, you know, that's just how the process goes sometimes, right? Um, so we'll see how kind of that ends up playing out. But um, keep in mind, like I said, all those UEFI releases have gone ahead, already been issued, um, or they're going to be coming for those 300 series boards a little bit towards the end of the month. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. All right. And uh, let me go ahead and actually just link um, our ASUS PC DIY group uh, if anybody's interested in checking it out, if you're not already a member. So let me go ahead and just post that there in the chat. All right, great. Uh, so next up, uh, let's go ahead and let me see right here. What do we got next? <clears throat> um, probably going to go ahead and just touch on this again. I know for some of you guys that join our streams weekly, uh, you know, generally on a weekly basis. Um, Thank you guys so much. But for those of you that are maybe new right now on the stream, I do want to go ahead and give just a quick shout out again to our ASUS Pro Artist Awards. Um, so we do have this going on right now. We'll be running this actually for a while. Um, give me one second here. There you go. And uh, the really cool thing about it is, of course, there's going to be a lot of opportunities here in terms of getting not only some cash prizing, but some awesome ASUS prizes. You'll see that the actual submission period already started from the beginning of March, and we'll be running all the way until May 15th. And uh, we have actually different, essentially, categories where you can go ahead and submit um, different types of kind of content creation, right? Whether it's going to be a photography, graphic, graphic design, film, and animation. And then there will be essentially, as you see right here, a total of $100,000 in pricing, uh, up to uh, $10,000 there in terms of a cash prize. Of course, ASUS hardware. Um, all you got to do is just click this button, take advantage of it, and get yourself uh, joined in there if you're somebody that is in this field as either maybe a hobbyist, maybe as a professional, maybe you're in the middle there as a kind of prosumer, whatever it might be, take advantage of it. Uh, we're really excited to be able to offer this and also be able to provide visibility to a great number of those that are out there creating amazing content. So uh, again, this is going to be running until May 15th. So let me go ahead and drop that link in the chat there for you guys.
Hey, Superman. Uh, right now, we don't actually have this shirt available. This was actually when we first originally launched the Asus PC DIY. Actually, no, not the original Asus. This, I think, was actually in a follow-up, uh, maybe the second 2.0 uh, release. So it's not right now available, but I'm actually talking to our... Um, uh, to our team right now about actually issuing some kind of swag and some opportunity to have some custom t-shirt pricing for those that are going to be involved in our ACS PC DIY group. So if you're part of our group, you're going to have some opportunity to be able to pick up some cool things like that. Um, do keep in mind, though, that when it comes, though, to pricing and things along those lines, this will be limited to our ASUS North American uh, community members just because we're based out of North America, ASUS ACI. Um, so anything that we do in terms of kind of giveaways and things like that is going to be limited to the U.S. and Canada. If you're one of our international users uh, or, you know, followers or members, I'm sorry to hear about that as far as, you know, that we can't support that. But, um, you know, rest assured, if you're following ASUS's global accounts or ASUS in your regions, they're definitely always working on uh, cool types of initiatives, programs, campaigns, giveaways and things along those lines. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and keep moving that along there. Uh, so that is going to be cool. Uh, beyond that, we've got some cool, just kind of just general uh, partner updates that I want to go ahead and give a little bit of a quick, uh, just kind of shout out to, um, give some visibility to, um, you know, we have a lot of different partners that work with us in a lot of different ways, and uh, they do come out with some amazing products that can be complementary to our uh, kind of ecosystem. And so I do want to go ahead and give some visibility to a few of those. So the first one right here is going to be, um, the monoblock for our Maximus Z690 Hero Series motherboard. This is going to be from our friends over at EK. Um, they have gone ahead and issued out a monoblock. Now, it's 100% not required. Um, you know, the VRM and the overall heatsink assembly on the Maximus Hero is very, very high performing. It's a very large, massive, multi finned and multi staged actually VRM heatsink with a heat pipe in it. It's going to be more than adequate in terms of ensuring outstanding thermal dissipation, whether you're talking about stock or overclocked. Um, really, the monoblock is really just for those that kind of actually almost just to a degree want the aesthetic of having something that covers the majority of the CPU VRM section along with the CPU. Um, it will also, of course, provide lower operating VRM temperatures, but it's not going to be something that's critical where you're going to necessarily see a, uh, you know, a a better experience when it comes to kind of an overclocking um, headroom perspective. Uh, although, of course, uh, the cooler that you can keep your components, the more efficient they would be. And sometimes it can help a little bit into what I would call edge level stability, where sometimes there might be certain values that if you can just help to keep them at a little bit of a lower sustained temperature, you have a little bit of a higher likelihood uh, of them being able to maintain stability. But it is a beautiful block. You can see right here how it looks actually on the board, um, covers that CPU, covers the VRM, and you know looks really nice right next to the poly mode display that we have on our ROG Maximus uh, Hero motherboard. So um, a really cool addition, and I think it is going to be a great option for those of you that are looking to essentially jump into a custom water-cooled build, and you want to have something that, like I said, not only aesthetically looks fantastic, but it's also going to give you that really high level of cooling performance. So um, again, you don't have to go with a monoblock. You could entirely use just the CPU water block. Most of my builds that I've generally done when I'm doing water cooling generally only use a CPU water block, but I am a fan of the simplicity and kind of the look of a monoblock when you have that full level of coverage. So it does look really, really nice. Uh, hey, Richard. Hey, thanks for joining us here on the stream. And Evo, also thanks for joining us here on the stream. So uh, again, that is going to be coming out. Um, you can go ahead and order it right here. You can see the link. I will go ahead and drop this in the chat for anybody that's interested. You can see pre-order right here is at $219. I think that's actually a pretty nice price in terms of combining a block that would cover not only, again, the CPU, but also the VRM, right? And again, this is going to be specific to the Maximus C690. That's very important. When you talk about monoblocks, they do have to be specific to the topology. So essentially kind of the, um, the layout of that specific motherboard. So you're generally not going to be able to take one monoblock from one motherboard to another motherboard. Um, in the same way that you could take a CPU block, and pretty much most CPU blocks are going to work on any motherboard. All right. So uh, let me go ahead and drop that there in the chat for you guys. And we'll go to our next one. All right. So next up, we've got uh, one other also item there from EK, from our friends over at EK. And that's going to be a uh, another block. So this is going to be another monoblock. And this is going to be for um, the AMD platform. So AM4 X570. Uh, this is going to be for our X570-i gaming motherboard. And 
this is, I think, actually, though, a really, really great solution. Um, because, of course, when you talk about small form factor builds, you're much more constrained in terms of space. And they're also going to be a little bit more challenging in terms of dealing with thermals. So being able to have full coverage to be able to offer really, really great thermal performance for the VRM heatsink on also the CPU on this platform. And keep in mind with an AM4 board like this, you could go to something like a 5900X, a 5950X. So you could be having a really, really high performance system in a compact size, um, entirely water cooled. So I think this is a really, really cool design. Again, a uh, great job from our partners over at EK that are going to be offering this monoblock solution uh, you can see just also how good it looks sadly you know for most mini itx based builds you're not going to see anything because most mini itx chassis are entirely enclosed and you don't see them uh, but if you've got maybe a system that does show it off it's going to look really good and if you've got maybe one of the newer mini itx platforms uh, that has more outward visibility then of course this is really going to look fantastic so um, i love the look of the block it really complements the board and again you get that outstanding performance and here i would say that while the vrm thermal dissipation design on the Dash I is very good, especially considering it's a mini ITX. Um, here, it's going to be really outstanding. You're going to go to the next level and really be able to maximize your overall efficiency, have those low temperatures, and really pump up that PBO tuning if you're really trying to maximize uh, taking your Ryzen CPU to the next level in terms of one of these mini ITX kind of setups. So that is going to be uh, the block for the X570-i. And again, this one will be coming out in the not too distant future, probably maybe around the very end of March, early April timeframe. You can definitely reach uh, uh, you know, reach out to EK and ask them a little bit more. This one, pretty similar price point as the Maximus Z690 Hero Monitor Block, a little bit less instead of, I think, 219, right? We've got 209. I'm going to go ahead and drop this one also in the chat for you guys if you're interested. All right. Michael says, fancy. I definitely agree. It's very, very uh, fancy. Uh, very cool in terms of that. And I also agree with Geekbench guy. Um, definitely a very, very cool design. All right. So one more is going to be actually a pretty cool uh, little accessory from our friends over at Ascom. So some of you may know that we make uh, mini PCs. And uh, our mini PCs have actually been quite popular uh, with uh, quite a number of different people, from people that are running in you know, everything from just small productivity systems to kind of media centers to kind of small NAS SAN type systems to even kind of interesting kind of emulation boxes, VMware boxes. There's a lot of different kind of permutations as far as kind of how people end up using these mini PCs that we have. Um, and our friends over at ASCA have uh, realized that there's actually quite a number of users that are out there that also utilize them um, in this kind of media center and I would say kind of an audio server configuration. They're really looking for the quietest experience possible. So. Um, this unit that we already have with the PN50 and the PN51, this uses uh, the Ryzen 5000 U-series parts. So you can literally get up to eight core 16 threads in the highest end model. So actually pretty impressive uh, in terms of the kind of performance that you could have in a unit that's literally going to be, you know, uh, <laughs> it's it's actually about the size of this card right here. It's actually, it, dimensionally, it's even a little bit smaller in some dimensions than this card. So it's very, very compact. It's actually probably closer to the size of this microphone right here. Um, a very, very compact unit. Um, but the cool accessory is going to be that it's an entirely passive chassis replacement. So let me go ahead and show this to you. Um, so here you can see kind of the normal chassis, right? Uh, it's got a simple, clean design layout, but this chassis right here is the Newton 850. Uh, this is a fanless chassis design from our friends over at ASCA. And you'll see right here that you're going to maintain essentially accessibility to all the I.O. that's specific to the motherboard, right, that's inside of there. But you're going to get essentially Visa mount support along with a full aluminum finned passive chassis design. So you can see right here, you essentially just remove uh, the... Uh, PN51's motherboard, right, from the system, and then you reinstall it into this guy, and you will have a really, really high-performing, superbly cooled, uh, you know, ultra-compact system. So you can see uh, you've got also attention to detail right there with an internal M.2 SSD heatsink to be able to ensure that you get, of course, good performance there, don't have to have any concerns from throttle, and you still have all the I.O. Uh, connectivity. Uh, you also have here, you can see optional high quality antenna 
This would actually even have higher dB antennas, so you could even have superior range and performance than the standard integrated antennas that we have built inside of the PN51's uh, chassis. So this even gives you um, a little bit of an improvement in that regard. And the PN51 also already comes with high-performing Wi-Fi 6, so you already get a very, very good Wi-Fi experience, especially if you're pairing it with an ASUS Wi-Fi router. So this allows you to kind of take it to the next level in terms of not just having um, a traditional uh, excuse me, just PN51, right? That you could customize the memory and the storage, but you could even go to the extent to customizing the actual um, chassis if you wanted to go kind of a little bit more crazy and go with something, like I said, that's going to be still really well cooled, but it's going to be entirely passive. So that is going to be from our friends over at ASCO. And uh, give me one second to go ahead and drop the link in there. And the PN51, if you guys are interested, both the PN50 and the 51, which this is compatible for, that model is already right now available. So you can go ahead and pick it up if you are interested in checking out one of those mini PCs. Yeah, definitely, Richard. Uh, it's quite powerful. It's it's pretty impressive. Now, keep in mind, it's a U-series part, so it's going to be, of course, lower in terms of the power envelope because it's the same design that we're generally going to be equipping into kind of more of the thin and light category of laptops. It's not going to be an ultra-high-performing wattage part that might be, um, you know, found in, let's say, like a more gaming-grade type laptop design. But I can tell you from testing it out, it's still very capable in terms of its overall performance. So everything from general kind of, like I said, web uses, to actually even basic editing, general application usage, uh, a SAN NAS, uh, VMware box. There's a lot of real kind of cool uses that you can do with these PN50, PN51 units. And we also do have Intel-based solutions that feature a wide range of different processor configurations from lower uh, TDP chips to higher TDP chips, ones that have Thunderbolt, ones that don't have Thunderbolt, ones that have multiple drive support, ones that have single drive support. There's a lot of different options that we have within our PC lineup, um, excuse me, mini PC lineup. All right, so uh, that gives you guys an, an, uh, essentially all of our updates there from our partners. So some cool updates that we've got going on there. All right, let's see what we've got here. Uh, went through our UEFI updates, our Pro Artist Awards initiative, partner updates. Um, oh yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and see what we've got in terms of promos and deals. And uh, we'll get ready to get into some of the new products. And as always, remember, if you guys are interested in promos and deals, we do have a dedicated site now that's part of the ASUS um, essentially website where we've now integrated our shop functionality. So all you need to do is head over to uh, www.asus.com US forward slash deals. And you will see all the deals that we have currently for, let's say, different system related products or our open platform business products. So that could be motherboards, graphics cards, monitors, routers, whatever. Here you can see one of the absolute best 1440p gaming monitors really on the market is going to be this VG27 AQL1A. Um, it's got great response. It has ELMB sync. It has display widgets. It's got a USB 3 hub, um, that 2440 by 1440 with that IPS based display, high refresh rate good response time, even has display widget to allow you to customize this. This is a great savings, uh, two, $299 compared to its normal price point of $379. Even if you go compare this right now to a couple of other places, um, very good price. It actually looks like it's notified me where it was just recently purchasable. So, um, you know, if it's still going to be on promotion, make sure to go ahead and take a look at that and see if you're interested. Uh, alternatively, we also have the secondary uh, special link, which will be bundles. Bundles will include everything from graphics cards uh, bundled with monitors and kind of different pairing configurations. So make sure to go ahead and check those out. So let me go ahead and link those in the chat for you guys. Okay. All right. Let me see. Uh, we got any questions right there? Hey, Google Eyes. Thank you so much for the nice commentary right there. Uh, hey Michael, will there be a will there be a, a Canadian version of the future? Uh, the future. We are working right now on revamping our Canadian-based website. I don't know specifically yet on if there will be a similar kind of deals paid. Ideally, we want to be able to try to have parity. There are, of course, a lot of different restrictions that come into play in terms of a lot of factors when it comes into you know um, 
uh, pricing and logistics, availability, you know, potentially tariffs. There's a lot of different variables that come into play, but we do want to try to be able to offer a parity experience for our Canadian user base in terms of kind of an ASUS portal. So this functionality is pretty new right now, just to the ASUS uh, US-based website, but we do have plans to further integrate uh, support for our friends up north. So um, right now I can't give you a specific timetable in terms of when we might turn that on, but we are definitely cognizant and we are working on that to be able to try to be able to offer that for uh, our Canadian users, because, um, you know, regionally, there are differences between the US site and the Canada site. And similarly, if you do purchase from the ASUS US a store, um, there isn't any option to ship to Canada. So you are correct in terms of you would need to actually be purchasing from the ASUS web store in quote unquote Canada, right? Um, so hopefully in the not too distant future. Um, but as of right now, no updates that I can give you in that respect. Okay. All right. So um, some good little deals right there and some promos. I think that covers us there. All right. So let's go ahead and get ready to jump into some new products. So we've got three new products that I want to be able to talk about quickly here. Um, and I think first up, let's go ahead and maybe jump into Mousepad, Tough Gaming P1. Yeah, I think let's go ahead and, and do that. Let's, let's talk about the Tough Gaming P1. All right. So this is going to be a brand new mouse pad that we're going to have. Uh, the big kind of update is we already had kind of a similar size mouse pad with the P3. The P3 had the old um, ID design that we had for Tough Gaming, which was not the new uh, kind of more vector design based language. And so this one is using the new vector design language. And really the big update is going to be that uh, the material actually has what's called a nano coating. The nano coating um, essentially helps to build uh, what's called kind of like a specialized resistance to any kind of dust, debris, dander, and even liquid. So um, it becomes much easier to be able to kind of wipe the surface of it, keep it clean. Also helps to ensure really kind of smooth, nice, consistent tracking. This isn't going to be like a large desk mat that we have like with the RG sheath or the RG scabbard. So if you want to go really big, you know, we still have the RG sheath. We have the RG scabbard. If you want to go with like a hard surface, then we have the uh, batless. That's going to be a hard surface mouse pad. Um, so this is going to be a bit more compact, um, but it is going to be a nice, uh, you know, standardized option right there. If you want to be able to have something, you know, for your desk, you maybe going to want to pair this with something like our tough M4 mouse, our brand new M4 Air or M4 Wireless, uh, I think would make a great pairing right here. Here you can see the dimension information. It's all listed right there. And you should probably see availability um, maybe by the very end of this month, early next month, uh, you should see this available. So this will be the Tough Gaming P1. Oh, actually, looks like they already updated in the back end. So let's see right here. Um, this is actually one of the cool things about the ASUS web store is that when it does have the buy button, you can literally click buy and it's already back in. So they were actually able to get it in a little bit earlier than I thought. So uh, you'll see right there, you can already add to cart and that also shows you the pricing, 20 bucks. So um, it is right now available, but if you're maybe interested in picking it up from a different e-tailer or from a different place, probably not gonna be until, um, you know, closer until the end of the month. So that is going to be the Tough Gaming uh, P1. All right. See if we got any questions right there. Hey, Overchilled, happy to have you here, man. Fantastic always to have a, a builder like yourself along with Sniff and some of the other guys be able to join uh, the stream. So very cool. <laughs> hey, Google Eyes. <laughs> That's a good question there. Uh, yeah, so Jason, we definitely know that there's a few people that kind of want to see something similar to, let me see if I bring it up here, like the um, ROG sheath. The ROG sheath is a much larger um, kind of quote unquote desk mat, as opposed to, I would say, like a mouse pad that we offer. Um, that is, it's much, much larger. But as of right now, we don't have any plans, but we have already kind of given that feedback to our design team um, and to our product management team. So just kind of for reference, again, if you're kind of wondering about um, let me go ahead here. I'll show you kind of the sheath. This is the sheath. So the sheath you'll see here, this is a much larger unit that we have, right? Um, and the sheath also comes in quite a bit of different colors. So we have it kind of this uh, red and black, but it comes in gray. Uh, we actually had an electro punk edition. Um, we have quite a number of different versions of the sheath. So there's different colors. So um, hopefully in the future, maybe we'll have something like the sheath for the tough gaming lineup. Okay. Uh, Hey, uh, 
Zephyrus. <laughs> I love the picture of your dog there. Um, we don't generally actually talk about system related products here on the stream. The streams all focus on our core components. So that would be anything that's kind of PC DIY centric. But I can tell you for the Zephyrus Duo 16, probably looking a little bit closer towards the beginning of Q2 timeframe. We're right now just getting ready to kind of push out a lot of the um, new kind of 2022 based models that we have for our system related laptops. Um, so that would include models like the G14, the G15, the M16, um, uh, the ZenBook 14, the ZenBook 14X. Those are all pretty much getting ready to launch um, or, or launching right now or available. And same thing with the Zero 16, you'll probably be looking a little bit earlier, I'd say around early Q2 timeframe. So around the beginning of next month timeframe. But, um, you know, make sure to keep it tuned to our social media channels for announcements in that respect. Okay. All right, so uh, let's get ready to jump into our next product. Again, after the Tough Gaming P1, uh, again, available right now, 20 bucks, nice compact, nano coating, keeps things really smooth, uh, really nice tracking. It's got an anti-fray and anti-stitch based design as well. And like I said, you don't have to super stress about kind of liquid dust debris or dander because you can pretty much just easily wipe it off there, okay? Uh, just keep in mind that anything that's really hot, um, hot items can affect the nano coating. So you don't generally want to use hot water. If you did ever kind of want to rinse this, you would always want to use uh, essentially uh, either lukewarm water or essentially cold water, okay? All right, so let's get ready to go to our next item here. Uh, let me see quickly, maybe if we got any questions right there before I jump into it. Hey, Bianca, um, I'm worried about the motherboard and the Maximus uh, Glacial Z690 because it doesn't have key release. Um, you know, that's just the reality that you can't have that really cool feature because it's a milled piece of aluminum. It's a, you know, um, it's a block, right? And so the reason why we were able to put key release on so many of the other boards is because like here, um, this on this Maximus board, we have the key release ejection button. If I can then get over to it right here, it's a cool little button that will allow you to eject the graphics card. Um, that it can't be incorporated in there. We are looking at some opportunities to kind of try to do this in a different way, but the best thing I can tell you is get an ESD uh, spreader tool, um, uh, ESD tool. It's not gonna chip anything or damage anything. You can fit it into that kind of a uh, Q slot and you can help to kind of eject out the graphics card if you find that that's an issue, okay? Um, yeah, so that's interesting in terms of using, um, ISO, uh, alcohol to clean. I generally wouldn't, wouldn't recommend it. Um, I would generally, like I say, I would stay actually more likely with just, um, standard water. Um, if you use, uh, like a solvent, uh, and it's a soap, ideally use something that would be a biodegradable soap. Not all soaps are biodegradable. So, um, and that's just because you don't want an essentially anything that's staying within the texture or the fibrous material within the, um, the pad itself, right? And will essentially kind of just break down from the water. So that would be my recommendation. If for some reason you did have to use a, something that would be like a solvent, okay? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and go to our next new product. And let's see what we got right here. Um, let's go with the motherboard. Uh, so this is gonna be the Tough Gaming B550M Plus here. And uh, I think I've got images for you on this guy. This is a nice uh, little update that we've got here. So let's bring this up here. All right, so this is gonna be a micro ATX based motherboard, um, solid power delivery implementation where you're gonna have an A plus two power stage based design. So more than enough to be able to drive pretty much support for any one of your Ryzen series processors. You've got dual, dual coverage in terms of uh, dual contact VRM heat sinks that cover both the uh, inductors and the power stages. Uh, you got a lot of connectivity on here, including 2.5 G as well as Wi-Fi 6 built on board, USB type C on the rear, support for two M.2 based SSDs. Uh, three RGB headers, Tough Gaming isolated audio design. There's really not a lot that's missing on this board, um, you know, in terms of its overall kind of core feature set. Uh, even if you get a little bit closer, it's got some, you know, the nice things that you would expect here. So you got the QLED for diagnostic LED. There's one of your RGB headers over there. One of your M.2 slots, M.2 slot there with the heatsink there. Another two of your RGB headers. Uh, you got your four SATA ports right over here, your USB 3 header right there, uh, of course, four DIMMs, and then, of course, you got all your I.O. there on the back, which if we take a look here at the back I.O., uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, you've got your classic legacy PS2, two USB 2 right there, uh, high-speed USB 3, USB BIOS flashback button, Wi-Fi 6, 
DP, HDMI, uh, and then you've got your USB type C, 10 gigabit USB 3, 2.5 G LAN, and then your multi-channel line level audio, and even an optical out. Um, so uh, you've got a very, very solid foundation. This is great, I think, to pair up with something like a Ryzen 5600X or maybe some of those new Ryzen series CPUs that are coming out that we just talked about. Um, there's some really good kind of options right there that are lower price points to be able to give you very solid performance that would pair up really nicely with this board. So this is going to be, I think, a solid option for those of you that might be looking to be able to kind of upgrade something in that respect. Um, let me see if I've got the uh, information right there. This one is going to be coming in at $169.99 is going to be the price there for that board. So uh, not too expensive in terms of the overall uh, pricing. So again, that is going to be the Tough Gaming B550 M plus Wi-Fi 2 coming in at $169. And you should see availability again uh, for this one probably around the end of the month, beginning of probably next month time frame. Okay. Uh, let me see right here if we got any questions before we get to our next product there. Hey, Chad, um, you can actually check out a full statement that we've issued already on our actually Twitter uh, that actually addresses that. So I'd recommend you actually go ahead and take a look at that. Um, and uh, on top of that, we're actually offering an addition, actually a million USD donation. So um, there's uh, already we've gone ahead and issued out um, uh, some information in that regard. So please go ahead and take a look at that information on our global Twitter. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see right here. Um, what question we got here? Well, the XY70 E accept an AM4 Ryzen 2700 chip, or is it Ryzen 3000 series and up? I'm asking because the UEFI BIOS my current system has issues. Um, that's a very kind of tricky question to answer. In terms of X570, X570 does support 2000 series, 3000 series, and 5000 series. Um, as far as issues, it's kind of difficult to say because a lot of times, sometimes people say they have issues and they could be operating system related. They could be uh, client device related and that device requiring firmware. It could be because they don't have a correct understanding of things like um, DRAM and DRAM scaling. And they think that their board is causing an issue or a UFI an issue, and really it's actually a limitation of the architecture of the platform. So uh, if you have actually issues, you know, consider joining our PCDIY group. We've got a great community of users along with myself that can give you insight and feedback. Um, but of course, feel free if you want, update the UEFI, um, see if that helps to resolve your issue. Do keep in mind that ideally when you do refresh the UEFI, um, any tuning that you have, you want to start again from the baseline. You want to start with an F5 defaults to be able to check your system and also make sure to reinstall your core chipset drivers. Okay. And also if you've been running an OS for a really long period of time, I'd probably recommend consider reinstalling your operating system from the ground up to be able to ensure that your OS is not the cause of your issues. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, Evo, um, you know, we can't really give you any information. You're going to just have to make sure to keep it tuned like everybody when it comes to the performance embargo for that new CPU. So um, I think that it's going to be coming towards the end of April. So once we get around to the end of April, we'll be able to truly be able to see the full performance uh, that essentially that really interesting part is going to be able to offer and just how good of a gaming experience it will be. So um, just make sure to keep it tuned, right? Uh, hey, fantastic, man. Thanks so much for being part of our uh, Team RG and Team Maximus. Always uh, happy to have somebody in. You don't necessarily always have to have the latest and greatest, right? You know, we've got tons of people that run their systems for three, four, five years, and there's definitely nothing wrong with that. If your system's working great for you, it doesn't mean you have to upgrade every year, right? All right, so let's get ready to jump into our next product here. We've got one more uh, new product, which is going to be with the ROG Delta Origin. So uh, give me one second here. I think I might have some additional images for the Delta Origin. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yep, here we go. All right. So, this is going to be right here the ROG Delta Origin. Let me actually change that banner out there, guys. Uh, there we go. So the RG Delta Origin. So this is going to be um, actually, I think, a pretty popular headset. This is going to be a lower cost option than the headset that I've got right here, which is going to be uh, the um, ROG Delta. So the cool thing about the ROG Delta is this one uh, pretty much has not only really comfortable feel to it, really nice drivers in terms of kind of mid-range, um, 
lower extension in terms of kind of bass and also higher kind of treble without being overtly sharp. Um, detachable headphone, very comfortable. But it one of the main things that added a lot of cost was also that it features an ESS quad DAC and amp built into the headphone. So this model will essentially still give you a native USB-C detachable microphone, no RGB, just red LED here. Still some very nice, comfortable pads, 50 milliliter drivers, good quality construction here, and that native USB-C connection, right? But it's not... Uh, going to be uh, with that ESS Sabre DAC and amp, but it is going to be quite a bit cheaper than the ROG Delta standard, which comes in at quite a bit more because of some upgrades. So let's go ahead and go through some of the uh, ways that uh, there's some differences on this model. So let me go ahead and open this up. And uh, just in case right off the bat, you're wondering like, well, well how much is it going to be, JJ? Um, it is going to be, I believe, $99.99, so $100. Uh, so it's actually pretty aggressively priced. Um, yep, that's correct, yeah. Uh, $99.99 is going to be priced for the uh, Delta. So I think that's a great price for this headset. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look right here. You'll see that it's native to the USB-C, so you still get that nice real flexibility that you have with the normal Delta, so that means you can connect it to your phone, your Nintendo Switch, your console, your desktop, your laptop, anything that's got that USB-C connection, just go ahead and plug it in, you're gonna be good to go. Uh, the big difference right here is the LEDs right here on the cup, they're only gonna be red, they're not gonna be RGB controllable or um, an Aura Sync like you would have with the standard Delta that I've got right here on the table. Um, it does have our Asus Essence drivers, which are still tuned, nice and dynamic. They've got a punchy feel to them without being overtly heavy. Um, they're not muddy. They've got good detail, good position, good tonality, and good accuracy. Um, and then you've got still your ergonomic uh, cup design uh, for this. Now, keep in mind, it's not going to come with the two sets of ear cups like the standard Delta does. The standard Delta comes with one uh, set that's very, very cool um, for kind of running for extended periods or if your kind of ears or your head runs a bit hot. Uh, or a bit warm, then you've got kind of an ultra breathable option. And then you've got a traditional kind of more isolated option, which is still very uh, comfortable, uh, but it has a little bit less breathability. All right. Um, we already talked about there, our grounding design, that's our kind of air, air chamber essence, uh, kind of two elements right here in terms of the kind of the ear, ear cups and the drivers, um, the lighting technology we already talked about there, native USB-C connection, uh, they do fold down, so that's going to be similar, just like what we've got with the standard deltas that I've got right here. Fold down design, angled in to be able to kind of pivot in against your ear, be able to make sure they're kind of optimally firing. You still get the on-ear cup controls, so lighting on or off, uh, volume up or down. Detachable microphone, it's still a nice way so that if you want to use this more like a headphone as opposed to a headset, you still have a nice kind of headphone headset experience because you can just go ahead and detach the mic. The mic, I'll tell you, it's actually nice and clear. It's a good quality mic for using in games. Um, it's not going to be, of course, at the level that you're going to have with a discrete, isolated, um, you know, condenser-based mic or something like that, but it's definitely not bad. It's nice, clear, it's intelligible, um, and it's got good pickup pattern. All right, and here you can see how it kind of looks with everything in that nice kind of red uh, classic ROG vibe. I think it looks quite nice. And for comparison, here you can quickly see a little bit kind of how the ROG Delta lineup looks. Now, you don't have the highest end deltas here where we have the Delta S and the Delta S Animate, which are even higher than this Delta model. Um, but you can see right here, both USB-C. This one, though, um, does backward support to USB 2. Um, this one also has that ESS Sabre DAC. The air chain chamber design is the same between the two. They both use the Asus Essence drivers. This one has RGB. This one does not have RGB. They're both the same microphone, um, same uh, ear cup design, and same level of controls right there. Um, this one also, like I said, does come included with two ear cups versus the Delta Origin only comes with one ear cup. Okay. And uh, again, that will be coming in at $99.99. So 100 bucks, probably around the end of the month, beginning of next month. All right, let me see right here uh, if we got any questions. Uh, hey, Michael, thanks so much for that feedback. My son, wife, and I all have the Delta headset. Yeah, uh, for me, it's been overall kind of, I think, my favorite headset that we've made within our lineup. Um, you know, it's a little bit on the heavier side, but I still think quite comfortable. But the sound signature is really nice. The microphone's good. Um, it's got a nice yoke to it. It has a lot of customization options, and I love that native USB-C because you can plug it into so many different devices. So like I said, I can go from using it on my Switch to then using it on my laptop to then using it on my gaming desktop. All my devices, it makes for a really, really nice and enjoyable experience. So I'm definitely a big fan of the ROG Delta. 
Hey, David, um, anything I can share on the ProArt mouse MD300? Um, I don't know actually if we've confirmed yet if we're going to be carrying the MD300 in the US. We did just launch the complementary system for that, so the PD5 here in the United States. But for the MD300, if you're part of our ASUS PCDIY group, um, make sure to go ahead and tag me in the group. Or you can also um, see if I have it right here. You can also email me PCDIY at ASUS.com, and I'll see if I can go ahead and confirm if we're going to be bringing in the um, the MD300. It's a fantastic mouse. I really love the design, uh, but you know, not every single region will bring in every single product. But um, if I can find that out for you, I'll let you know. Okay. Okay, very cool. All right, so uh, that's going to get us out of the way there in terms of our three new products uh, that we've that we've got coming out. So again, the Tough Gaming B550M Plus Wi-Fi coming in at one sixty nine ninety nine. The Tough Gaming P1 uh, mouse pad, which is coming in at nineteen ninety nine. Uh, 20 bucks and then the rog delta origin which is going to be coming in at 99.99 essentially 100 bucks so three brand new products that we've got coming out for you guys all right so i think that covers us there um let me go ahead and uh, see if we can answer maybe one or two questions from our friends over at instagram from our hashtag as asus so i'm gonna go ahead and bust out the Instagram right here, see if we got a question or two, and then we're gonna get ready to jump into our ASUS PC DIY Builders Spotlight. Um, so let me see uh, what we've got here in terms of any interesting questions. Um, so what about a new desk mat instead of the ROG Baltius? Uh, so um, what that user is asking is actually, I think I've got it right over here. It's this one, this is the ROG Baltius. So this is our hard surface. Uh, gaming mouse pad. I really actually like this one. It's cool. It's also got some RGB lighting on it, and it also has a USB pass-through right here on the unit, and it has Qi wireless charging. We don't have a yet a replacement model for this as far as something newer that's going to be coming out. We are looking at a couple of new updates. I would probably say the newest model that we have outside of the, uh, excuse me, um, the Tough Gaming P1 that we just talked about, I actually recently announced here which was, let me see if I still have the images over here for it. Mm. Do I have, uh, t -t -t. let me see here. Scab oh, there it is. Okay, good. The Scabbard 2 Medium. So this one is probably our most recent uh, that we're getting ready to launch right here. So we have the large Scabbard and now we just updated it with the Scabbard 2 Medium. So. Uh, it's a little bit more compact as well. So this is uh, our most recent uh, mouse pad. Okay. And if you're looking for anything specifically, you know, like I always tell people, let us know, you know, send us over some from information and let us know what you're looking for and we'll see what we can do. We're always listening to our users. We'd love to be able to try to design and develop something that's complimentary for what you're looking for. Right. Um, so let's see here. What other question? Uh, are you guys going to make different color peripherals? So Brad Heidi uh, is asking us about different color peripherals. Um, and I'd say it depends. You know, we, we've got quite a number of different types of peripherals that we recently launched. Um, most of what we generally have released has been black, has been monochrome. But we have also um, expanded recently with offering a little bit more of a kind of white aesthetic uh, offering uh, with our ROG Moonlight White series of products. So um, let me go ahead and bring those up for reference here. So this is our ROG Moonlight White series where you can see we have the ROG Strix uh, Moonlight White TKL keyboard. We've got the ROG Strix Go uh, here headset, which is a Moonlight White, the Cetra uh, IEM headphones. And then we also have the Strix uh, Impact in white. So uh, we have been expanding that to be able to offer some additional colors. We also occasionally have had some Electro Punk offering. So that's also been a little bit of an accent color. Beyond that though, what I can tell you is that Colors are challenging because some people absolutely love some colors and other people totally don't like other colors. So it can be very difficult to sometimes be able to kind of spin up production on a color and then not know kind of to what degree people are going to be committing to that color scheme, right, in terms of kind of adoption. Um, I think right now, probably from a safe perspective, you know, we'll continue to offer, of course, black being our primary focus. Um, and then from there, supplementing that with white because there's a lot of kind of popularity in having kind of that alternate option. Um, but beyond that, for more kind of specific colors, whether that might kind of be like blues or greens or pinks, you know, um, 
I would probably say maybe that's going to be more in line of what we'll do with special edition IPs, like what we did with our Gundam edition series product or some of our other upcoming IPs that we're going to be seeing this year where you're going to be seeing some uh, co-branded um, IP products that will be coming out within the peripheral lineup. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and maybe answer um, one or two more questions here. And then I'll go ahead and just check to see if anybody's got any questions there in the chat. Mm. Mm. Can you guys make Wi-Fi adapters for PCs? That's coming from Thomas Bagto. Um, yeah, we actually do make quite a bit of wireless adapters already for the PC. So we've got, um, you know, uh, pretty much kind of everything you would ask for. We've got Wi-Fi 6 and we have Wi-Fi 6E PCIe based adapters. So let me go ahead and see. I think I probably have some here because I know I've already talked about them here in the stream before. So uh, PCE. AX58. It doesn't look like I have the image up for that one. So let me go ahead and just bring up our product page here and I can just show you here. All right, so here we go. Yeah, uh, so this is just an example of one of the wireless adapters that we have. This is our uh, generally pretty much our latest, our flagship model. This is the PCE AXE. So that means it's a Wi-Fi 6E 58BT. So that means you also get Bluetooth. It's a nice, clean, compact, by one uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi adapter with a nice magnetic antenna base, high performing. Just drop it in and bam, you've got Wi-Fi 6E. Do keep in mind though, for Wi-Fi 6E support, you have to be running with a compatible router and Windows 11. If you don't need Wi-Fi 6E, we also have Wi-Fi 6 adapters. Um, so, And we also have USB-based adapters. So, so whichever word you're looking for, whether you need USB uh, or you need internal PCIe, we make both of them. So we got you covered in that regard, okay? All right, so let's see if we got any questions right there before we get ready to jump into our uh, PC DIY Builder Spotlight. Hey, David, thanks for letting us know. Yeah, I definitely like the Baltius. Um, I'm torn back and forth. I think personally my favorite mouse pad that we ever made was the um, Whetstone, which was a really nice silicone, rollable, fully washable um, mouse pad. That was my really my favorite one. I really do like the Cordura, though, that's on the Scabbard and the Scabbard 2. Um, uh, the Scabbard 2 doesn't use Cordura, where the first one did use Cordura, but the textile weave material is really, really nice. So I really do like that. Sheath is nice and solid, but the Whetstone is my personal favorite. But the ultra smooth, of course, tracking performance that you have with the hard surface is really, really nice. So uh, Geekbench, guys, the Setra 2 Core, a good IE option for an RG phone. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I really like the Setra 2. It's a nice, it's got a really nice tonality to it. The driver design that we're using with the liquid silicone driver, uh, driver technology in there makes for really nice, clean, tight base. Good overall consistency between both channels. Um, it's a really nice, solid um, uh, in-ear headphone. So um or monitor, however you kind of want to phrase it, different people use different terms. But definitely, I've been overall very, very pleased with its overall experience across a wide range of music from everything from, you know, uh, EDM to pop to jazz to rock, um, you know, whatever you might want to listen to. I think it sounds really well. It's not overtly colored. Good neutral sound stage and tonality, good bass extension, good mid range and detailing. Um, it's definitely a gets a thumbs up for me. All right. Thanks so much, uh, Yavor. Um, really always nice to be able to hear commentary like that. I can totally respect and understand why you might say when it comes to things like brand loyalty, but it's been fantastic to be able to hear that you've had a great experience with us and uh, thankful for your support and consideration. And definitely you'll hopefully keep us in mind in the future. Always uh, you know, looking forward to how we can hopefully provide a better experience for our users when it comes to the products that we're producing. All right. Um, so... Oh, Kevin, Kevin gets a thumbs up. One of the absolute biggest RG fans right there and Asus fans out there still has his whetstone from long ago. Um, very cool to hear that. All right, so let's get ready to go ahead and kick things off uh, here with our uh, PC DIY Builder Spotlight. So again, guys, if you guys are not familiar with the Asus PC DIY Builder Spotlight, it's where we show copy, showcase your builds. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's an air-cooled, water-cooled, mini ITX, ATX, uh, we love showing them all off. And also moving forward, we're going to be having some new parts to kind of our spotlight session where we're going to have an OC spotlight. 
uh, monitor spotlight um, and um, yeah, OC spotlight, overclocker spotlight, monitor spotlight, and a setup spotlight. So um, I'll be figuring out kind of how I'm going to integrate those all together. And lastly, we're also going to be featuring some of our PBA partners now. So if you're not familiar with PBA, PBA is our powered by ASUS um, kind of initiative where we work with really the best system integrators out there in the industry. And they work with us in terms of integrating ASUS components into their ecosystem. And they do an amazing job at building some systems. Um, and there's definitely nothing wrong with considering a pre-built from one of our power by ASUS partners. Uh, it's a great way to be able to maybe start off um, with getting a system that's kind of up and running and then maybe learning with that system and then upgrading it over time. Or maybe you're somebody that just doesn't necessarily have the time to entirely get into it, but you still want the benefits of high-end PC hardware, but maybe also with the support that you get from a system integrator. And that's kind of one of the cool things that you do get by going with the PBA partner, right? Um, so let's go ahead and first check out our first PBA partner here. Uh, that we're going to be highlighting, and then we're going to get into our PC builds. So this is going to be from our friends over at VRLA Tech, and this is going to be their Phoenix system. So uh, let me go ahead and just get this uh, loaded up in here. All right. All right, let's go ahead. And if you guys actually saw our little bit of our intro image, you already got the sense of this cool system uh, that was there. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, so this is going to be uh, the Phoenix uh, series from VRLA Tech. Oh, very, very nice. So um, beautiful photography and really nice, cool, clean setup that we've got right here. We can, of course, see that we've got an ROG series board in there. Uh, we've got an ROG Strix series graphics card, some nice, clean cable management. Um, that RGB theme is on point, and they've even got this all set up, of course, with all of our hardware here. We've got an RG monitor, RG peripherals. That's also one of the cool things, too, is right. you can get kind of everything from start to bottom all set up and paired in there. But this is a fantastic-looking system. This would definitely be, if I didn't tell you that it was built by one of our PBA partners, could definitely be a submission from one of our members there in the community. Um, of course, uh, this really nice, beautiful, clean RGB lighting uh, within the chassis gives you of course all that open visibility that you have there for all your course lighting effects really being able to show off different looks and feels for the system uh, i'm a little bit partial here to this classic uh red and black aesthetic but that multicolored vibes there it's definitely nice it's got a nice little uh point of contrast really throughout the system all throughout uh while well, you still got those nice black undertones right uh, but definitely here actually i think this is the same mouse i'm using right here on my uh, my system this is going to be the uh, Chakram. And then it looks probably like our ROG Strix. Yeah, this is our, I can see right here from these little X, this is our ROG Strix Scope RX keyboard, right? Um, and then we've got one of our ROG Swift series monitors there in the background, but very, very nicely done here from VRLA Tech in terms of one of their systems, specifically the Phoenix. So I will go ahead and uh, show you guys the link right here, drop there in the chat if anybody's actually interested in checking them out in terms of their configuration systems um, and kind of specking things out. So, and one of the other cool things too is that because they do work with us in terms of allocation is that, um, you know, they are also in a, another way, a source of being able to get sometimes uh, components that necessarily could be challenging to get at different prices because they're all locked in and, uh, you know, essentially predefined for the users at those respective price points, right? So you're good to go in that respect. So all the way around, I don't think really there's anything that I would change up right here. Um, I even do like that they have enough slack space here between the mounting of the actual cooler with some nice custom VRLA tech branding right here on the pump housing where the actual cable goes underneath swoops and then goes up here to the top. Um, you know, there's two ways to go about that. You could have flipped it and then had the cables run underneath here and then uh, go up this side. But then that might block a little bit of the visibility for those fans. So I think that works. And you still have nice visibility there of the RG logo. And you even still get the nice visibility there of the RG Dark Hero um, labeling that we have there on this Crosshair 8 Series motherboard. So all the way, nicely done. VRLA Tech, great submission here. Really nice to be able to show off. So uh, kudos to those guys. And uh, always nice to be able to have them as part of the PBA family. So let me go ahead and drop that there in the chat. Uh, give me one second here. I think, yeah, I've got the link right here. Ah, yeah, I actually can show you guys the link right here. So give me one second.
And here's the configuration page. So you can see it actually starts off there at 3199. Um, and you can see, right, that's equipped with a Ryzen 7 5800X and a GeForce RTX 3080. So uh, you get all the core sp specification information listed there, right, where, as we noted, it was already using a Crosshair 8 Dark Hero based motherboard, right? Um, got that 360 AIO cooler that's in there. It was 32 gigabytes of memory. Uh, the uh, graphics card at 3080 series, 850 watt power supply, and then the Lan Lee based, of uh, course, classic O11 right now at this standpoint. All right. Let me see right there. Hey, uh, Vincius, um, we actually have a full post in our PCDIY Facebook group that actually talks about DDR5 and Z690 and 12th gen. I can tell you that um, in most situations, there's actually not any quote unquote issues. There's been a lot of conjecture by people and even some media that incorrectly have talked about this. Um, in most situations, what I've generally found is kind of three things when it comes to DDR5 memory. One, you get users that incorrectly will take two kits of memory and mix them together and then attempt to enable XMP and think it's going to work. That's not the way that XMP works. It's not the way that DDR um, XMP profiles are designed to work, right? So if you buy two, two DIMMs um, in a kit, the actual density, the rank and the ICs are tuned specifically for those two DIMMs and the profile that's been defined for it. You can't then try to take another kit, put it together and expect it to work the same. It doesn't work that way. Um, that's why natively native kits, so whether it's a two DIMM kit or four DIMM kit will have different uh, timings, will have actually different, uh, sometimes different voltage parameters. And they'll also, have, they also be entirely different in terms of their rank, their density and their ICs. That's one thing that tends to kind of sometimes be a factor. Another factor is people not understanding DRAM scaling. So DRAM scaling would be uh, the baseline frequency that's supported, take for instance, like by 12th gen is 4,800. Um, we've tested 100 CPU samples, pretty much more than probably any reviewer, any user. So we have a very good understanding to know the range of what kind of CPU um, the IMC, so the IMC is the memory controller that's built inside the CPU, what range it can generally get up to. Uh, we generally know that probably about over 80% of CPUs can, can reach or sustain around 6,000 MT in terms of frequency. Um, so, But the reason why you would keep that in mind is let's say maybe you buy like a 6,200 or 6,400 kit of memory, it might not post, it might not work. Why? Not because there's something wrong with the motherboard, there's wrong with the UEFI or anything like that, but because the uh, profile wasn't essentially can't be guaranteed. You're talking about an overclock. It's the same way that you can't guarantee your CPU will hit 5.5 gigahertz, right? Um, there's going to be margin of error and there's going to be difference. Now, going to a more conservative frequency helps you to know that you can for sure be within that kind of effective range, right? Where when I said like 80%, if you took 10 CPUs, only eight out of those 10 are going to be able to reach that. Two of those might not be able to reach that value. So you might have to run it at a little bit of a lower value, or you might have to tune it a little bit differently to be able to get there. So those are just some subtle things to keep in mind. But we actually have a full post in there, and I'll actually be having a guy that will be coming up probably in the next week that will be, be posted also in the group that goes into more some insight. Um, but make sure to go ahead and check that out. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can quickly just link you to this um to this post that I have in the group. Um, and if you're not part of the group, join the group. Uh, because like I said, uh, you get, I think, a much better understanding on some of these points than a lot of sometimes the conjecture of information that's that's out there. So um, give me one second here to bring that up. Should have it around here somewhere. Ah, yes, here, here we can see. So this is actually the post that I have right here. So it's, he says, notes on DDR5 compatibility and enabling XMP goes into kind of helping you understand population, density, rank, IC, um, actually target value. So you can see like if you run four by 16, you can only expect 4,000 to 4,400 MT. If you run two by 16, you can expect 4,800 to 6,000 MT, right? And you could even have higher speeds. So there's a lot of other information that's in there, but I'd recommend, you know, consider joining our group checking out that information. And if you have you know, more questions, then feel free to go ahead and ask. Um, and I will go ahead and drop that there in the chat as well, okay? Hey, Rusty, uh, happy to have you here, man. Thanks so much for joining us here on the stream. Okay, so let's go and uh, jump into our first build here in our PBA, excuse me, in our uh, PC DIY Builder Spotlight. So who are we going to go with first here? Um, let's go ahead and kick that, kick this off with Blood Raven Rig. 
Let's go with that. Let's go with Blood Raven Ring by Ramon. All right. Okay. So let's see what Ramon has got for us here. Ooh, this is pretty cool. All right. All right, so this is our first system right here. That's pretty cool. We've got definitely an ROG base setup. We've got a cool dual monitor arm right here where we've got one vertical. We've got one horizontal. Uh, we can tell here Ivy's got the ROG Spatha. He's got the flare. Uh, looks like these are the Thetas. And then he's got his system right there to the left. Um, overall, very clean desk setup. <laughs> Much cleaner than my desk, I'll tell you that for sure. Um um, overall, this is nice. I, I, I'm not necessarily the fan of a little bit of the hard edge right here sometimes on that setup, but definitely everything else is fine. But let's go ahead and take a look and see what else we got here. Yeah, we've got the Thetas. These are some of our absolute highest end headphones. Um, also have a quad DAC. Very, very impressive design. Also have multiple drivers. So this is really for somebody that wants a high level of kind of um, not just stereo, but they actually want multi-channel um, audio experience, right? So, you know, multi-channel for maybe... Um, movies for tv shows and then also for games right so you enjoy kind of that surround experience along with very good stereo experience uh the spatha there so definitely a uh, very high performing multi-button based mouse and then uh, i think we've got a little bit of video here so let's go ahead and take a look here and see what his video is like oh interesting cool so uh, yeah we've got a similar kind of 011 in there we've got some noctua fans red and black it's got his cabling that he's been working on in there and overall getting ready to do some benchmarking. Okay, I can dig that. Okay. Um, right here, he's got the Flare, the Spatha, and then the Thetas. Blood Raven. Okay, I like that. And then here we can see our system. So let's take a look and see here. I like the kind of the way of having a fixed color scheme in there by using the um, Noctua Chromax, right? Where we've got the little tips there right there, giving you the red accent. And then some just nice little red that we've got right there within the motherboards RGB lighting, the NZXT cooler uh, lighting, then running a red and white gradient mix on the memory, which I think is kind of cool. And then from there, also just a little bit of that visibility of that ROGI. Um, now, you could go vertical with the Strix LC card. This is the card he's using in there. The cool thing about the Strix LC card, it has a really cool RGB display on the front when it's vertical. But I actually... Um, kind of dig the way that he's got this set up and laid out where he went with the horizontal. And definitely for me, I do usually prefer the horizontal orientation. The only reason why sometimes I like the vertical orientation on the LC is just because it's got so much more prominent visibility with that RGB display. But a good use of space here where he's got the top mount right here for his AIO. And then he's using the secondary radiator mounting space right here for the Strix LC. So um, this is only a 240. So he's got the 240 right here. And then this is another fan that he's got set up right there. Overall, it's a cool setup. It, it works well. It's functional. It's clean. It's well executed. And it's definitely going to be high performing. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at his submission form and see what details he's got for us here. So let me go ahead and open this up. Let's see what we got right here. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, let me get his image back up there. Okay. There we go. Okay. So let's see here. So this is going to be from uh, Ramon and not his first build. Uh, does the build have a theme? Yes. ROG, black and red. Three words to describe the build. Cool as ice, quiet, and beastly performance. I would definitely agree based on the hardware that we're seeing in here. This is Blood Raven Rig. Uh, it's got an X570-F in there, 5900 X in terms of the CPU, 32 gigabytes of CL14 memory, and he has that overclocked to 3766 uh, along with a C14 um, on the timing side. So impressive. He's definitely getting some nice performance out of that system and out of that kit. He's got the ROG Strix 3080 Ti LC, so absolutely beastly graphics card in there. And of course, uh, all inside of a Dynamic XL, along with those Noctua fans. Um, pretty much all Asus in terms of the other core items for the mouse, the keyboard, and the headphones. Um, and then he's running a 4K monitor at 165 hertz there. So definitely he's focusing at you know high image quality, high frame rate, high resolution experience. Uh, $5,500 approximately was his budget for a system. He was most proud of the overall look and the general cooling performance. And I would also say 
thumbs up on the nice timings uh, that he's got there in terms of just taking his memory to that next level and getting a little bit more performance out of the system. Anything that he would change about the build? Uh, maybe put RGB on the fans. To me, I actually really like the look on here. I don't know that you would really need to put RGB on the fans, and Nakua fans already have such great performance. If you did want to go RGB, one thing you could do is maybe consider RGB frames. So like a Halos frame, I think that actually would look kind of cool on here and give it a different vibe. Um, and it would, I think, maybe be a little bit easier. You wouldn't have to kind of change everything out, rip anything out. You could just put the frames on top of there, run those wires through the back, and then get those connected. Um, so that might be a way that you could add that without having to replace all the fans, right? Um, how long did it take him to build the system? Um, five days as he has kids. <laughs> I don't have any kids, but I've got dogs. So I can understand how sometimes time goes to other things, right? Um, he pretty much uses the system for gaming and his overall favorite function feature on the ASUS side is going to be ASUS Fan Expert. Uh, Ramon, all the way around, um, thumbs up, man. Great setup, great looking build and definitely nice in terms of the performance. Let's see uh, what the community says. Uh, we got Juicy right here and uh, Incredible, right? Yeah, I definitely think two definitely nice comments there for the system. So uh, kudos, Ramon. Thumbs up. Definitely nice build. And thanks for being Team RG, man. Best of luck with it. All right. So let's get ready to jump into our next build. Okay. And what are we going to have next here? Next is going to be, let's go with... Um, yeah, we'll go with this one. Okay. I think this is going to be DS 2.0 from Nolan. Uh, generally on the stream, we usually only focus on Asus hardware pairings, but occasionally I do let users drop in some systems there where they might have maybe, uh, you know, another item. And this one does do it, but he's definitely still part of ROG, Team ROG. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the system. See what we've got going on here. All right. Okay, so cool. We've got a little setup right here. He's got some Star Wars. He's got, of course, a little stream deck there, controller. Got a setup. Oh, nice little thumbs up on the clip speakers. Okay, so we got that little transparency. We can see right there we've got RG Strix board. We've got some G scale memory, EK pump uh, housing there in that RGB, of course, with some RGB on his graphics card. And there we can see he's got it, of course, in the vertical orientation. Okay, this is very uh, tight build right here, right? So you can definitely see that he's uh, using pretty much all that space there, right? Interesting, he went with some compact fans in there. I don't know that they were necessarily needed, but definitely he's adding in there, be able to give himself some additional benefits to overall airflow. Um, got, of course, that vertical mount. All the cables look nicely cleaned and routed in there, so kudos in that regard. As you pull back, no complaints here. Again, we've got another fan of the Noctua Chromax, which nothing wrong there, right? When you've got great performing fans from Noctua, you definitely can add those into the mix. Um, overall, I like the clean kind of subtle nature to it. Just a little bit of pop there from the RGB lighting, from the graphics card, from the motherboard, uh, from the actual uh, EK cooler, and then from the G-Skill memory, right? Nice little so profile shot. And then we've got there. I like how you left all the key components kind of visible and clear. So I think we'll leave it on this shot right here. Gives us a nice look and feel here. Uh, it's got this really cool kind of monochrome vibe to it, right? But definitely, I mean, it's nice when you add in just that kind of simple rainbow vibe to it. Although this could work really well with any color because since you've got the monochrome vibe going on here, it's going to uh, work really well. It's interesting that you've got a push-pull fan configuration here. I'm not sure really how much you, you need that for this type of system, right? Um, but... Overall, hey, if you got the space, why not definitely utilize it? But definitely, I mean, uh, it, it's probably a bit more than you necessarily need there. But I will give you credit here that you've got everything really well routed in terms of all your cabling. So um, very, very nice cable management. So kudos in that regard. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here and see what we've got in terms of your submission form. So this is from uh, Nolan. And... Um, Let's see, does the build have a theme? Uh, for the pictures, no. I just put the unicorn puke on the RGV display. Um, I generally go with minimal static white or green color effect, right? Um, I would agree. I think actually if you're going with just white or green, I would like that vibe. I think that would look fantastic with that build. So he actually says that he does have that on his Instagram. Let me see if maybe I can uh, see if I can bring that up here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and see if I can bring it up there in a second. Um, 
Three words to describe this build, powerful, fast, and workhorse. That definitely sounds like it, it hits the mark there. Um, when he originally did this build, it was in an NZXT H510 Elite, so quite a bit more compact. It would have had a little bit of a different vibe. So here you can definitely see he's got a lot of bit more, a lot more space, right? Uh, he originally dubbed it the Death Star, but when he moved it into the PCMR edition 011, uh, he now dubbed it the DS 2.0. Okay, I can dig that. Uh, let's go ahead and see his core components here. 5900X, he's of course got that 360 EK AIO, and that's running on an X570-E, 32 gigabytes of memory that it's in there, CL16, one terabyte NVMe drive, along with another two terabyte hard drive, a 3080 Ti in terms of his graphics card, that 011, and then a thousand watt power supply, and then a ton, as you can see, of the Noctua S12 um, A PWM series fans. So, uh, overall covering them across the board. And then he's got two monitors that he runs in terms of his overall monitor configuration. So very, very nice system and definitely a workhorse in terms of performance, right? Uh, never really set a budget as he upgraded the parts here and there. Um, pretty much kind of got it all together throughout the first year. And he didn't really, um, and sold barely used parts for what he almost paid for. So I think it was a combination of kind of getting everything all together to be able to get him to the end point that he has right here. What is he most proud of? The aesthetic hands down. I wanted a powerful rig, but wanted one that looked as sweet as it performed. The stealthiness of the case is amazing and always draws attention with the mirror finish. I would agree. That, uh, definitely when I saw Lian Lee release this PCMR edition, um, I almost wanted to get one, but it was so rare and it was super hard to get, right? Because of just, they made it in that limited quantity and it has that beautiful kind of mirror transparent finish to it. that looks really, really, really cool. Um, is there anything you would change about the build? Uh, he'd love to be able to get an ASUS based graphics card, but it was really challenging to do, but he was really happy to be able to go from his Strix uh, 2080 Super that he had to be able to, of course, upgrade to the 30 series card that he has. So all the way around, man, still fantastic. Thank you for being Team RG and Team Strix. Um, how long did it take him to build the system? About a year, because in terms of getting everything together and then swapping it out, from uh, one chassis to the other. Um, uses it for pretty much a mix of everything from coding, productivity, work and gaming. Call of Duty is what he plays most of the time. Um, some old uh, MMORPGs, EverQuest, uh, God of War, um, and also Cyberpunk and hoping to get into some Elden Ring soon. So he's overall a really big fan of the design language they have on ROG hardware. Um, and not only that aesthetic, but also of course the overall kind of performance and feature set. So a uh, big fan of uh, ROG, man. Thank you so much, man. Definite thumbs up. I think it's a really nice looking build. I'm going to see right here if I can quickly uh, maybe pull up your, see if I can pull up your uh, Instagram. And if I can find uh, that kind of shot that you might've had in the white color scheme. Oh, okay. Yep. So yeah, we can see right here, um, right here. This is, you can see um, his setup right here. It looks like before he actually didn't have some other fans. So he has it in the green. I think the green definitely pops and it looks nice in the green. And I would agree also with the white. The white could also look really nice. Uh, there you go. There's a nice thumbs up. And let's even live comment. Live comment, guys. Thanks for being hashtag Team ROG and hashtag Team Strix. Best of luck with the build. Bam, there we go. It's done. It's entered. Signing off. All right. Very cool. All right, man. Thanks so much, Nolan, uh, for submitting your build. And let's go ahead and get ready to take a look at our next system right here. Give me one second right here. So that was, again, DS 2.0 from Nolan. Awesome. Hey, Don, thanks so much, man. Uh, thanks for being part of Team RG and Team Strix. And if you get the chance, make sure to check out the latest version of GPU Tweak 3. Our formal launch for GPU Tweak is going to be coming uh, in the beginning of next month. So I'm um, really excited. It's pretty much now reached overall feature, mat uh, feature maturity and stability. Um, and it is our kind of primary utility that we'll be using for tweaking, tuning, monitoring, and control of graphics cards. So if you're interested, make sure to go ahead and check it out. All right. So... That is going to be DS 2.0. Let's go ahead and jump into our next build. All right. Ah, okay. So here we've got a great build. This is gonna be from our friends over here at um, 
Modding Cafe. Uh, let me see here if I can quickly, give me one second here if I can find this. I just want to make sure if I can see if I can find the name. Ah, yes. So, so, okay. I found it right here. So this is the uh, gaming while you're gaming uh, PC, uh, as they call it, uh, which I think is kind of a cool way to kind of play around with the naming here. And Monty Cafe, definitely one of the uh, best builders and modders out there in the game. Uh, definitely do some amazing, amazing work. So let's go ahead and uh, let's show you some of their amazing system right here. I don't have a submission form, sadly, um, but I went ahead and handpicked the system because I love the way that it looks right here. So let's go ahead and take a look right here. All right, so we've got our car's got this fantastic in-wind chassis, which we already know kind of just gives it that nice, really cool uh, look and feel in terms of kind of giving you that classic kind of retro-inspired uh, aesthetic, right? So you can see, right, it's the 309, the gaming edition. And then bam, you just have this next level aesthetic with this beautiful uh, setup right here in terms of having our Maximus C690 formula. So our first motherboard in white in terms of the RG lineup, and then pretty much all white throughout there. And this white chassis um, just gives it a really, really nice, bright, bold um, aesthetic, right? And of course, with a really cool layout in terms of everything, right? I mean, we take a look right here, you can see you've got a beautiful block in there. Um, of course, all that white right there from the RGB from the DDR5 memory, these really beautiful, clean, interesting runs that we've got in here, right? Going from not only the CPU block, then going actually into the rad over here, right? Then into the distro over here, then down, uh, horizontally matching the car with that back plate and then that active back plate, but still living even visibility for the OLED display. Um, just really, really nice. This is really, really nicely done. Hey, Don, how can I send pictures to you of the build? All you got to do is just be part of our PC DIY group uh, and drop the... Um, Drop your, uh, drop your files into the submission form. I'll drop the submission form in the chat in a little bit, okay? So give me a second and I'll go ahead and share that in the chat there. Um, but overall, I just it's a beautiful aesthetic. It's really nicely done. I love these uh, cables right here that have been customized that have a little bit and nice kind of this silver uh, aesthetic to them, right? So as opposed to just going with kind of your run in the mill cabling, even this is has a little bit of kind of that just next level attention to detail to really be able to offer something that looks and feels different, right? Um, I love the aesthetic right here when it actually has the side panel on there and it adds a little bit of the tinting. I think it looks really clean. Uh, here, we can, of course, we have the integrated uh, pump res right there. And then that runs all out with, of course, all the different kind of bits, power, hardware that we've got there in terms of all the water cooling equipment. And here is just a beautiful shot of it. And again, you've got the formula board underneath there. You've got the 12900K under that beautiful block. Um, and you can also, if you're noticing, right, the formula, the big thing about the formula outside of its aesthetic and so many of its great features is that it also has that integrated VRM a water block design. So uh, the VRM is water cooled, the CPU is water cooled, and then you have, of course, this full setup right here with the dual rads um, giving you cooling for pretty much everything. So this is going to be a very cool, quiet, and super performant base system, right? And again, love these cables, how they almost kind of disappear within the vibe, but they add just a little bit of reflectivity in there. So overall, coffee, uh, excuse me, uh, modern cafe, beautiful build, beautifully done. I love the backplate on this, on the bits power block there for the card. And I think uh, maybe let's, Let's leave it there. I don't even know. I mean, uh, I, this is, again, one of the reasons why I love the tempered glass. If you go from before to after, right, you'll see just how much of an aesthetic difference just that tempered glass helps to create that nice silhouette. And this is one of the things that I really love about Modern Cafe is that they have an attention to detail to think about how the lighting is going to play around with the system once everything has gone into effect, right? And you can see right here that once that tempered glass has been placed on, it helps to accentuate and create that actually... Um, 
contrast, right? It's almost kind of like a uh, ND filter, right? Um, that you're going to be able to see that you've got more separation within the lighting, right? So you can clearly see the ROG. You can then see the OLED. You can see the lighting there from the actual GPU block. A little bit of that new illumination right there on the actual pump and res. And then, of course, the fans themselves that just have that nice kind of touch of lighting. Really nicely done. Very, very clean. Uh, yeah, I would agree. And Richard says, so clean with white. Very nice. Really fine. A nice and clean setup, and uh, Rusty Howard gives us a Tetris bro. Um, hey, Stardust, as of right now, no plans on doing anything that would be separate like that. I mean, we're working right now with partners pretty much. We have, I think, just about about the biggest assortment of water block support in the industry. But in terms of kind of doing something that would be like a hybrid solution kind of card like that, nothing like that planned. Um, we're still testing the waters in terms of kind of this LC solution that we have. Um, and right now that's going to continue to be sold as being a fully self-contained solution. Whether or not we would offer a, like a bare bone card or something like that, I don't know. And I don't think realistically right now uh, we tested out the waters a little bit there we're trying to do something where we already had a pre-block card with like the asus ekwb card um that was a little bit challenging because of the market conditions um definitely i think we'll continue to monitor feedback from the community uh aio based solutions still tend to not be that really popular so it's a bit of a niche segmentation so i think for us it's right now not necessarily a priority we'd rather prioritize on okay, kind of traditional cooling designs for our cards or having water block support but at the same time, maybe if we can work with a partner and having some type of cooling accessory available for one of our cards, then that could possibly be an option. So I don't know. Um, but definitely, thanks for your feedback in that regard. All right. Um, so that is going to be for Modding Cafe uh, Z690 uh, board uh, 12900K and then, of course, all that Bits Power hardware. And I think uh, it's also even got a cool little video that I will link in the chat. So uh, let me go ahead and drop that in there, too. Yeah, so Okay, so let's go ahead and get ready to go to our next system here. Give me one second. And this one is going to be Penguin. Penguin from Guillermo. All right, Guillermo. The system is looking pretty cool here. So, all right. So, this is going to be Penguin from Guillermo. Let's see what we got going on here. All right. <clears throat> Another hard line based build right here. Um, Wow, very cool. Interesting. I'm liking the design here that we have on uh, this distro. And some very nice runs here. I um, mean, you know, I'm not always the biggest fan of hard perpendicular lines to throughout everything. But I think in terms of the design aesthetic here, that was kind of the focus, right? Is to be able to have a system that had almost kind of an entirely vertical set of lines um, that ran across the entirety of the system and created this kind of very cool layered effect. Uh, there's a lot differently going on here that's really kind of cool and interesting. I mean, love the blue, the frosting aesthetic right here, along with the white accenting that you can also see here within kind of the lighting on the board, the lighting there on the RAM. I think the choice of going with the the Royal base D skill dims also add a little bit of extra pop to that white in terms of the accenting. Uh, love the fan implementation right here. Uh, the fittings in terms of the black also give you a point of contrast. Nice integration there on the flow monitoring. Interesting why maybe not you didn't use the flow monitoring that's built in on the motherboard, I believe, because he's got a, um, an ROG series board there. But overall, I mean, this is beautifully done. It's very clean. It's well executed. There's nothing to negate on here. Um, of course, really nice mono block there. Um, covering us, of course, on the VRM and the CPU. So let's go ahead and just take a closer look through right here. A little bit of flow monitoring, flow monitoring information right there. That really nice kind of frosted aesthetic there for the blue. I love that kind of white and gray and black right there as another point of color. And here we can see we've also got an active backplate in there. It's very nice. It's very clean. This is really well done. Um, it's very, very nice. Really nice bends right here. I can tell you these bends, they're tight, they're clean, they're well executed. That's a great looking system, yeah. 
there's nothing I would even change here. And I, I, I really actually like the aesthetic of keeping that else also vertical because you add this kind of cool little transparency effect that you have right here. You have some depth and dimension that plays around with the overall aesthetic here. You get to be able to have these uh, tubes down here to be able to give some visibility. And you even get that little bit of kind of fill lighting there from the bottom kind of pushing up that you wouldn't necessarily get if it was in a different orientation. So overall, it's a really nicely done. Um, Penguin gets a definite thumbs up. So let's go ahead and uh, just see what we've got here in terms of his submission form. All right. So does the build have a theme? Classic black and white like a tux. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can see that. Um, all right. And uh, three words to describe the build. High performance, uniform, aesthetics, and functionality. I definitely would agree with all those things. Uh, does the build have a name? Uh, not really. Uh, it's just my girl. If, if I could choose one thing, it would probably be uh, Penguin. So I, I I think that kind of aligns with quote unquote the tux, right? Okay. I can see where that works. Um, he's got a crosshair, a dark hero in there. It's great to be able to have that dynamic OC switcher technology for being able to get even more performance out of his Ryzen 5900X. He's got a 3090 card in there, of course, that's water cooled. That's all inside of the O11 XL, the ROG certified edition. 64 gigabytes of 4000 megahertz G scale memory. Uh, custom set of cable mod cables. Um, and then he's got the um, AL120 uni fans. All EK water cooling parts for the actual water cooling hardware. So that's going to be for the fittings and for the block. And pretty much all of those items right there. EK front distro plate along with EK's uh, radiators and then a 1300 watt power supply to be able to go ahead and power the entirety of the system. About $8,500 in terms of the actual budget. Um, he's most proud of the balance of white and black products and it was his first hard tubing a water cooled build. Okay. Hats off and thumbs up. That's definitely an outstanding job for being your first. Um, definitely looks better than my first uh, run right there, especially for some nice runs right there. I mean, and I'll even tell you that, of course, it's it's a little bit simpler uh, when you're using a distro plate to be able to create the uniformity and consistency. Um, and sometimes I prefer a little bit more of kind of a varied kind of approach and having a little bit more kind of curvature, a little bit kind of more fluid lines. But this is really nicely done. Um, some nice curves kind of thrown in there and some nice depth and balance. And Definitely a really nice job, especially for being a first time build. Solid thumbs up, man. Kudos uh, through and through. Anything that he would change about the build? Yes, he accidentally bought a water dump sensor in Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I can understand that. How long did it take him to build the system? About one month. Uh, pretty much he uses it for gaming. So Vanguard, Warzone, and Modern Warfare, and also for some school. Um, his favorite feature kind of function of ASUS hardware uh, is going to be our UEFI BIOS. Well, Guillermo, um, really nicely done. I think it's a great looking build. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, Richard tells us pretty frosty. I would agree with that. The color works from Michael. Jelly from Rusty. Uh, <laughs> he got back. All right. Um, I definitely think that you get a thumbs up from the community and you get a thumbs up from me. Um, very nice in terms of your overall build. All right. So um, let's see. Let's go ahead and keep moving this along here. Okay. Uh, we've got two more builds here, guys, and then we'll wrap things up. We've got uh, a build here from our friends over at Poor Greek Builds from George. This is going to be Project Black. You know, with, with a name like Project Black, B, BLK, man, you know what? It's got to be good. But you know what? From uh, from George and team, I definitely would not expect anything less. Uh, they do some fantastic builds. So I think this is going to look really nice. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. All right. Let's go ahead and check it out. Ooh, I like it. I like it. It looks good. It gets a thumb. All right. Already, it gets a thumbs up. Um, I really like this approach right here that you've got. Beautiful, nice. Of course, it's got the satin tubing right here. I love that it's running out from the block straight into the GPU block. You kept it vertical, which I gives it gives this nice kind of depth and contrast from the top and the bottom of the board, um, and also helps to reinforce contrast and, and kind of textural differences that I think really look nice here, where you get to see elements of the PCB, right? You get to see the satin finish on the board, right? You get to see the subtle textural differences there on the board, then the, the highlighting there for the light on the card, then the fittings, the tubing going into the pump, res, some nice lighting right there radiator radiator and our fans here and then just some subtle lighting i really like the way this turns out 
if I was probably doing a build, this is probably similar to what my approach would probably be. Um, I like doing things kind of simple without necessarily being overtly complicated, um, focusing on kind of functionality and performance. A lot of times, actually, I only favor one radiator. He's got two, of course, in this kind of setup, which it's overkill, um, but it's really well done and it's a good use of space within the system. So definitely nothing wrong with that. Um, so we can see right here, just another shot. Looks really nice. This is just a great looking. And I love this nice little uh, contrast here. It's interesting. Some people might say, well, why wouldn't you pick the same color? So kind of blue to go here. But I think this is a little bit of color blocking. Um, when you add in kind of a color like this, like a little bit of a golden kind of brownish kind of color, one, it forces you to kind of accentuate some of the other colors. So the black and the blues that you're seeing there, they actually become a little bit more pronounced. And I think that's a smart way to kind of approach the color identity. But of course, you could have gone with something blue to kind of pair up with this, and it would also probably still look really good. Um, I don't, you know, and, but this also harkens back a little bit right here to the Extreme GP building, right, community. So maybe there's a little bit of a tie in there. And we can see it, no RGB, which also still looks fantastic. Yeah, I really love the way that that kind of satin finish looks there. And even nice, clean integration there on all uh, cable management, well laid out. It's functional. It works well. So just hats off again and thumbs up. Another great build over there from the guys over at Poor Greek Builds. Um, no complaints from me. Let's see what we've got here from the community. Asus and EK, the best. I would agree. That's a great combination. You can't go wrong there. Hey, Nick, I'm not sure what kind of issues you might have, but feel free to go ahead and, uh, you know, I would say right now, this I use actually both the Maximum 16 Hero and the Extreme continually. I'd say they're very mature, very stable and reliable. We've got a lot of members in our PCDIY group. Feel free to go ahead and share commentary there. But if you've got feedback, send it out to our customer service and support team. Um, but I can say right now, I feel very confident that the overall maturity and functionality of the base UEFI is quite good. Um, Michael says, slick. Simplicity from Rusty Howard. Uh, I like this. So let's see. It looks like a platform where you would see Luke Vader and uh, Darth Vader fighting on it. Very cool. I could kind of see that. <laughs> right. OK. Uh, so let me go ahead and see if I got his uh, submission form up here. So give me one second to go ahead and bring this up, guys. All right. Okay, so sorry, let me bring that back up there and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the submission form. All right. <clears throat> so this is, yeah, from Poor Greek Builds from George. Uh, <clears throat> Does the build have a theme? Dark. Three words that describe the build. Dark, efficient, and clean. Project BLK, Project Black. It's got a 5900X in there, a 3060 Ti, 32 gigabytes of memory. Um, two um, 970 plus drives in there, 500 gigabyte and one terabyte, all running on a 570 E gaming board, an 850 watt Seasonic power supply. Uh, we've got an EK loop and CPU block, 420 rad in the front and a 360 on the top. Um, then an alpha cool GPU block. That's all inside of a silent base 802. And then he's got a range of fans uh, from Be Quiet in there with Silent Wing 3s, high speed versions uh, running either 120s or 140s. About $3,000 for the budget of the system. He's most proud of the tubing runs. I think the tubing runs look great. I think the theme overall is really clean and well executed. Nothing that he changed about the build. Really happy with it turned out. And I would agree, it's a fantastic build. Um, only about uh, a day's worth of work in terms of getting up and running. Uh, pretty much used for coding, which I think this is a fantastic system for coding, uh, but really could use it for everything. And that GPU still gives you a definitely nice baseline for having a high performing gaming system, but you've got that nice processing performance with the memory and the CPU to lay the foundation for kind of productivity work, right? Client wanted absolute silence and the ASUS BIOS makes it really easy with presets and with fan tuning, control and calibration. Definitely that why it makes sense why he's got dual radiators to be able to really be able to dissipate all the heat be able to probably keep those fans at a very low operating profile. I'd probably assume he's got these fans running somewhere at around like 600 or probably 1200 RPM. So very, very quiet operation while giving you great thermal performance. Overall, George, thumbs up. It's a fantastic build.
Um, again, Nick, um, without more insight, I can't really give you any insight, right? So I would recommend use the support template in our ACUS PCDI group, post your question there, see if I can go ahead and provide you some insight. And then from there, maybe I can then direct you to how you could then better get support through our formal channels, through our services support team, or maybe we could give you enough insight within our group to hopefully help you, um, you know, resolve whatever issue it is that you're experiencing. So again, consider joining our group. We have a template under our featured a post announcement that asks for a lot of information so that you can hopefully give us the most information so that we can help to give you insight into whatever your issue might be and we can go from there okay all right uh, i would definitely agree with michael man well done right uh yes uh let me go ahead and give you a link here to our group Dropping it in the chat for you there, Nick. All right. Okay, so uh, I think we've got one last build, guys, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. So let's go ahead and take out our last build of the stream. All right, I think this is going to be, what is this build? Oh, this is from uh, the Omnisaya, I believe, if I'm saying that correctly, from Adam. All right, the Omnisaya. All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't get it uh, up there. Let me go ahead and add that correctly. There we go. The Omnisaya from Adam. All right, let's go ahead and check this out. I don't think I ordered these uh, images correctly, so we'll have to kind of see, see what we get them in here. Oh, okay, I already see something interesting here. We've got a Rajin Tick chassis, which is a little bit on the rarer side. They make some definitely some cool stuff. We've got a nice little cool stat panel right here. Ooh, we can see we've got another formula board. Uh, formula boards have been popular in today's builds, right? Um, we can see Z690 because we are going to see that it's white. Got a nice uh, EK block that's in there looking fantastic complementary to that. This is actually similar to what we just showed up earlier, right? Uh, but a really nice approach right here. This is a fantastic bend right here. This is really tight. A bend like this is actually quite challenging and annoying at nailing. So kudos to do this in such a tight radius right here, going from the CPU straight into the VRM block. And then we've got one going out. We got that cool little OLED live dash. We got some dominant RGB memory in there. Got that nice little cool kind of rainbow gradient going on there. Loving these colors here with the orange and the white. That's looking very, very nice. Ooh, and then look at these beautiful spirals here. Got some purples going on with these white. I'm really liking this. And then we got some orange over here. So the orange and white, really cool color combination. This is, um, you know, different, distinctive, uh, and some beautiful bends in here, which I would definitely agree, right? Michael notes, really nice. Um, so let's go ahead and take a further look and see here. Um, yeah, this is really nicely done. Beautiful bend down here, another bend down here. These are really nice and symmetrical, really clean um, there. The only thing maybe I would almost like wish there was something there to cover just that a little bit to give you a little bit more of a silhouette finish, but this is really cleanly done. Love this illumination down here, the orange, the white, and I love the white with the purple. The purple is this back color tone that's present throughout the rest of the system, which looks fantastic, right? You've got this purple here giving you illumination all the way here with these, these bends. This is beautiful. These spirals right here, the purple here, 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 and here, and then the orange. And then you've got the, the purple over here as well with these orange. This is, I love this. This is fantastic. It's really, really cool. This is really well done. Um, creative different and i like it i'm i'm torn as you know like this looks really great with this color scheme i but i do wonder what it would have almost looked like if this would have been vertical i mean excuse me horizontal now you can't do it because in the way that this chassis is kind of configured right it's really kind of suited towards towards this vertical type of design right and this has a really cool aesthetic right but if you could have seen the bottom of the board which also would have been in white and added that little purple mix with some lighting there i think that could have looked really interesting too so it's like almost part of me wants to see this theme even go further which i think looks really cool but um i really like the way this turns out uh, adam Fantastic. Thumbs up. I really like the way that it turned out. So um, let me go ahead and see what you've got there in your submission form here. So 
This is from Adam, not his first build. Uh, it was actually a sponsored build. Uh, white and orange to honor EKWB and Seagate. Um, oh, I think that's fantastic. So Seagate there makes sense, right? Because they've got in Seagate Gaming, right? They've got that orange. Okay, I can see where that um, works. Huge, powerful, and bright. I think it fits definitely uh, three words to describe the build for sure. The Omnisaya. So in terms of the core hardware, let's see what we've got right here. This is going to be a 12900K running on that Maximus C690 formula. Uh, Corsair Dominator Platinum 5600 uh, MT. Uh, a 3080 Ti RG Strix card. And then he's got a 2 terabyte Fire Cuda 510. And then a Fire Cuda 520. And then a Fire Cuda 530. So 2 terabyte, 1 terabyte, 1 terabyte. All running off of a Thor 850 watt in the Aris Eva from Rajin Tech. And then we've got a mix of EK hardware there for uh, the Vidar fans, right? Six of them. And then um, he's got multiple uh, Evo uh, uh, Vidar's uh, 140s. Um, two Coolstream CE fans, uh, the kinetic pump right there, as two of them. Uh, of course, the torque fittings. Uh, and then the, uh, excuse me, the block from EK as well. And then the velocity block also from EK. And then custom cables from Cable Mod. Fan. Fantastic. Serious thumbs up, Adam. Love that in terms of the overall kind of look and feel that you were able to achieve there uh, for the build. So let's see here. Uh, budget. Um, right. It's sponsored, so it's not defined fully. Um, what aspect of the build is most proud of? The clean and the elegant look. Definitely I would agree with some of these beautiful, nice bun uh, bends right here. The symmetrical nature really adds to the elegance as well. Um, nothing you would really change, just minor tweaks. He really loved the way that it came, came out um, in terms of the overall build. A couple of months due to the current kind of just crisis with everything in terms of all the parts availability. Um, what is this amused for is a social media um, and kind of showing off, right, as a, you know, product showcase system, right? Um, and then also catching up with Cyberpunk, also some Watchdog Legions. Um, his favorite kind of Asus function feature hardware, the formula board, the whole thing is just stunning and offers outstanding features, functions, and performance, right? So overall, man, from Liquid Cool UK, Adam, the hat, the hat comes off, man. Serious thumbs up. It's a fantastic build. I'm going to go through it just one more time because I just loved the way that this build uh, came out. And I think my favorite thing is going to be the color scheme, right? Oh, I forgot. There's actually some additional images right there. Yeah, this illumination panel is really, really nice. Yeah, and here, of course, this showcases uh, the Evo, right? And and also how large of a chassis it is. And that's also another point of credit that I would want to give. It's challenging to build in a really big chassis like this. You think that it's easy because you got a lot of space, but in some ways it can actually work against you because you've got so much space you have to fill that you got to want to balance it out to make it look like it's filled out and used, right? And not empty, right? Um, and here it's beautifully used to give you kind of a nice breathing room in terms of all the hardware, a nice level of kind of symmetry and balance, and also a balance in terms of the way the lighting plays off the positioning of all where the hardware has been placed out. So um, I think, you know, when you use the word elegant, I would definitely agree with that. So nice bends, very nice Omnisaya, very sweet uh, red color. I like it. This is gorgeous, and the colors were great. Yep. Hey, Tyrone, thanks for uh, your feedback. Uh, we did actually just release brand new the ROG Fusion 2 500, which is actually going to be like a kind of come Delta wireless because it uses, uh, it has a DAC in there. It has brand new AI beam forming microphones. It has... Um, native USB-C connectivity available to it. Um, it's got a lot of really nice design features. If you're looking for a wireless version of the Delta, the ROG Strix Fusion 2 500 is going to be the headset that you're going to want to check out. So make sure to check that out. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Well, that goes ahead and wraps up our stream. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on the stream. Uh, hopefully you guys are going to have a uh, stay, 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 stay health. 
uh, stay safe and stay healthy for this weekend. Um, and uh, best of luck with your builds and whatever you might be doing. As always, just stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on the stream. And if you're catching us on demand, thanks so much for uh, dropping us a comment, maybe a follow, a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you're not part of the ACUS PC Hour group, make sure to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and drop a link one more time for our group. And also, uh, if anybody is interested in submitting their system for the ASUS PCDIY Builder Spotlight, not only can you do that within uh, the group there under the featured announcement, but I'll go ahead and uh, drop our uh, form there so that if you're not even part of the group, but you did want to go ahead and submit your system, you can do it by just submitting via the Google form. So let me go ahead and send that to you guys there as well. Okay. That's it, everybody. Take care. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your day.